Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Philip Mostert, who is the CMO at Road Code. Um, a new application that has gone live on the Hedera network uh, in partnership with a number of organizations. Philip, welcome. Thank you so much, for, uh, Zenobia, for having me. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I think, I know there was an announcement in December, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit, what is Road Code? Sure. Um, I think Road Code, firstly, we, we're targeting the pro cycling vertical. Um, and it's very important probably just to, to highlight initially uh, this is a major partnership between Velon um, and um, at the HBAR Foundation. Uh, starting with Velon, Velon is owned actually by the top teams, the pro, uh, pro cycling teams in uh, the cycling worlds, um, and it consists of of you know teams like uh, Enios and uh, Team uh, Jumbo and you know a number of the uh, the other uh, previous winners of these world circuits. Um, so we are um, basically launching a platform, or the the platform itself is going to be a place, a single place for all rider content um, where people can stream and, uh, you know, consume um, content uh, for, uh, through various different formats and and, and means. Uh, pre pre predominantly, it's going to be, uh, you know, an uh, OTT platform or over-the-top counter um, uh, platform uh, with a fantasy league um, component to it. Um, and obviously, there's a very strong Web3 element to road code, of course, you know, blockchain and Web3 element. Uh, where we're going to have digital collectibles and we're going to have uh, trading, um, you know, uh, digital trading options um, and also in-game assets, which is going to be very key to um, the uh, fantasy league that will be launched. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a very exciting space. And also uh, what's innovative on Road Code is that we're developing a very unique new uh, ranking system for cycling. Uh, and what makes this different is uh, that, you know, historically uh, ranking systems have always been about the teams that are winning uh, the races. Uh, and that's, you know, traditionally how things are aggregated or tracked. Uh, what this ranking system is going to do is going to be tracking the individual riders. Um, and uh, what that means is that you can actually set up your own fantasy league, you know, uh, teams, and you can be you, your own manager on the platform. Uh, but you can use real time data to set up and manage your teams. Uh, and that's obviously going to have a very fun implication to the fantasy league that's going to be de deployed and the game mechanics that's going to be deployed. Very exciting. And you mentioned Velon. So I think those who are in the know in the cycling world probably know who they are. But for those of us who are not, um, can you share a little bit more about who is Velon? Yeah, well, Velon, um, I mean, so for this project, they are uh, uh, basically owned by the top 12 or so cycling teams around the world. Um, in this project that we've got uh, launched with Road Code, we've got the top 10 uh, cycling teams. Um, they, they are the full list of these teams are going to be obviously is available on the platform itself. But like I said, we've got, uh, you know, top teams like uh, Kickstart and, and Ineos and uh, Yumbo, uh, Visma teams. Um, and these are like the best of the best of the, within the cycling fraternity. Um, and like you said, anyone that is in or, uh, you know, cycling enthusiast will be, um, you know, well known with Velon. It is a household synonymous uh, label and brand. Yeah, and then tell us a little bit about Road Code. You know, you you guys, who is building it? What's some of your background? Where you know, where did you all come from? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a wonderful mix of different uh, eclectic skills, I suppose. <laughs> um, but you know, at the core, I think one just needs to sort of highlight what the core partnership really sits with with Velon itself and with the HBAR Foundation. And you guys will know very you know very well who the HBAR Foundation is. Um, and then, you know, obviously we've decided to build the tech stack on uh, Hedera, on the Hedera network, which is obviously also very important to this. But the teams behind the projects, um, you know, where like Immortal uh, sits is a, uh, it's a venture studio based out of Denmark, uh, Copenhagen. Um, it's, it's basically like a, uh, you know, a creative hub um, or a tech, um, you know, new business builder. 
Um, and there were, you know, Immortals working across a number of different very exciting projects, with Roadcode being one of the bigger projects that, that has recently been launched. Um, and then we've got uh, one of our, the Web3 developer partners, which is Reality Plus Gaming. Um, and they've done some exciting projects in the past with, uh, you know, IP rights with BBC and, and you know, that type of uh, enchilant of, of international broadcast rights. Yeah, and it does seem like, um, you know, virtual gaming or, um, you know, some of these fantasy teams are becoming very popular. Why did you all decide to launch Road Code? What about this sport said, hey, gosh, we really need you know, yeah. um, something better here? Yeah, I think, you know, that, that's that's the best question, I think, really, because what problem are we trying to solve here, right? And right now, the cycling uh, fraternity is largely quite fragmented. Um, you know, it's also because of the way that the, the obviously the broadcast rights are managed and all the different team splits and the management teams and the riders. So right now, if you're following cycling, you have to go to different sources to basically get, you know, um, get into the know and you have to follow and subscribe to a number of different forums. What Road Code does is aggregate this all into a single platform. So just going back to sort of, you know, the tagline, it's it's one place for the race. And that is going to be very key to this. Um, and it's really about the content that we're going to be developing. Um, and the content's going to have some really fun um, angles to it. You know, we're going to be developing documentaries. We're going to have podcasts. We're going to have like direct to, um, you know, rider options where people can actually interact with their favorite sports stars. Um, and then obviously vice versa, we're going to have an option. And that's what Web3 is about, right? It's, it's the direct to fan model uh, right. where we're going to have, um, you know, forums where fans can truly engage with their favorite riders. They can get inside of views. They can get training tips and advice from their best riders, and they can really get closer and more personal with the riders, which is going to be very important to us. But moreover, on the other side, right, we're going through a very interesting time with social media. And social media, and I'm not going to mention some of the, you know, the behemoths in the room. I think it's been quite topical for the last uh, couple of weeks or months. But social media is facing a significant crisis in its in its uh, aging, you know, in its maturity cycles. So what that means is now what we're going to be launching is a platform that is going to be decentralized, that's going to provide riders and fans a direct to each other or a di direct to fan model, which means that they're not going to rely on these large intermediaries anymore. Um, and another very important component, the Web3 component that is going to be, you know, enhanced on this platform is that all the fans themselves or community members, they're going to own their own data and they're going to have ownership of whatever that ecosystem looks like, which is very, very important moving forward. So we're not going to be reliant on intermediaries. You know, we're not going to be worried about a big tech solution, basically deleting accounts because we might not be complying to policy <laughs> policies or something like that. So we don't have to worry about it. We're going to be taking that power back, you know, and I know it sounds like a little bit of an idealism and cliche, but really what we are going to be doing is we're going to be decentralizing that authority. And we're going to be providing a very equal level playing field for everyone who wants to participate um, and share in this. And I mean, yes, road code is going to strongly appeal to a cycling you know, enthusiast or a cycling uh, viewer or sports uh, fanatic, but it's also going to have a much broader appeal. Um, you know, it's going to have something that, like that anyone within uh, Web3 or gaming or um, you know, collectibles are, will be able to participate. We're also looking very strongly at the user journey and, and onboarding and making sure that we're not using very alienating terms or jargon that is probably going to be, you know, not understood by the average person. So it is important that we appeal to a very broad market. We're not using, um, you know, tech specific jargon. We are normalizing the onboarding process. And this also leads me to the point of where and how this, this platform is basically going to be run through the user account. The user account is basically you're just going to set up a profile or you, you might have already set up a profile. Now, within that profile, basically, that's going to become your vault, which means that on your profile, you can not only be social with other profile holders, but you can also store and hold all of your digital collectibles or your in-game assets and even have options, obviously, for the buy and sell component with a marketplace that might be launched in the near future. Um, and then obviously going back to Hedera, because Hedera is such an important part of this ecosystem, you know, HBAR is going to be the, the primary form of transactional uh, utility value on the platform. So this is really where someone's going to be able to keep and store all of their own, um, you know, personal, um, you know, memorabilia and, and track records and all that sort of thing uh, that comes from building your own, you know, persona within this beautiful ecosystem that's being developed. So I, I do want to drill in a little bit more to each of those um, 
parts of the platform, but you you made a good point about social media, right? It can be very unidirectional and it can feel like brands are just talking at you rather than actually engaging with you. Yeah. Um, so how do you build that, you know, that closer connection between sort of the writer or the team and the fan? Yeah. Um, setting up, you know, direct dialogues, setting up direct forums, I think is going to be important, but it's also not coming across as a promotion from a promotional angle. And I think this is where brands get it kind of wrong, where there's an agenda behind it. You know, you're pushing an agenda, you're pushing some sort of adoption or sales agenda behind it. And what we're trying to do, and I go back to my point on leveling the playing field, is that everyone is going to be a co-owner of this, you know, this ecosystem. So riders have an incentive, users have an incentive to build and to, to basically create this, you know, this uh, symbiotic relationship in, in what is going to be road code in the near future. There's going to be voting options also for community members. You know, if you, if you are, um, you know, an avid follower and you want to actually be involved in the decision making, the strategy of what that looks like, it's all about participation and ownership, um, which goes back to the point, it's not going to be a broadcast or one directional, you know, uh, means of, of communication. I think that's what originally social media was or supposed to be about, right? It was, right. it was supposed to be this, okay, now we're going to build this like, you know, um, two-way uh, dialogue that is going to sit between the brand and, you know, the, the, the communities. But then communities realize that, hold on, now this is a great forum to complain or to air dirty laundry and all these sort of things. And it lost, its, it lost its original sort of, you know, ethos of what we were trying to build in Web2, which was a community. Web3 yeah. now kind of now is, the technology is ready for this more equal um, environment where you've both got a vested interest into whatever's going to be built, right? So you're not going to be sitting there with an agenda that skews one or the other because that doesn't meet the the symbiotic nature of of what is being eventually uh, deployed, you know, within the ecosystem. So that too, but also they're not going to be yes, to a degree, there will be a central management team that's going to be you know handling all the uh, the Q's and A's and making sure that there's stability and everything else. But really, what what social media should have done was let go of the conversation. Let the conversation take an organic flow in whatever direction that takes, right? So yes, we are the original you know, impetus providers, right? So we've set the platform in the direction and um, we've given it so, so-called, we've given the keys over to uh, individuals. And I mean like keys in crypto sense, yes, and also keys as in writing the car sense or writing the black sense, right? But it's, it's really about handing over that responsibility at some point in the future where now it's going to be owned by the teams themselves, right? They've got that, um, that got, they've got one, they've got that broadcast option to, you know, obviously publicize and tell the world of what they're up to. And they don't have to worry about new Twitter policies or, or any, you know, social media policies that might be suddenly implemented, which means that their accounts are in jeopardy. They have ownership of that platform. Right. Then the user themselves, they can get involved. And yes, if they don't like something, there has to be a certain amount of vetting and, and all that. But at the end of the day, we do believe that, Communities will look after itself. Sometimes brands and and you know agencies or or agents in the middle just need to step out of that process and let it figure itself out. And I think that's where web the new web is kind of heading in. Um, you know, in in terms of what it might look like. Uh, you know, post um, post web three or or post web five or whatever you want to call it in the future. Yeah. Okay, so walk me through. I'm a user. I you know I sign up for the platform. I start to engage. What kinds of things can I do or collect or display yeah. today? And then what do you think I'll be able to do, you know, down the road? Yeah, it's great. So I think what is really going to be important to this is going to be the OTT component, the video, the uh, video, uh, con you know, um, content that is going to be produced. So and sorry, OTT means? Uh, over the over the counter, so like uh, or over the top, right? Over the top means basically um, it's it's uh, film production or TV production that can be streamed across multiple devices. You might uh, be familiar with smart TVs, where you know you go to a smart TV and there's an icon on your home screen, uh, and you can click on this, you know, this icon. Be it Netflix, Netflix is right. an op you know an example of that. We're going to have a road code, um, you know, smart TV or connected TV option. Uh, and we are in discussions, exciting discussions with certain TV providers, and I can't give too much information about that. But say you buy this TV, there's going to be an icon. And if you're a sports enthusiast or a cycling enthusiast, you have direct access to all this content that's going to be deployed. And that's okay. going to be one of the first things that's going to be developed on, on Road Code. Um, and within that, there's a number of different channels and a, a different uh, you know, content verticals. But one is going to be a 
behind the scenes, which is going to be important, um, you know, components of what's happening really behind the scenes and what are the training, uh, you know, reg regimens look like, um, you know, what are the teams themselves up to? Are there any tips that, you know, people can comply to? There's going to be um, biometric data that's going to be included in this. So you can actually compare your own biometric or training results to professional uh, sports athletes. It's going to be great, right? Do I want to do that? Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I, like, look at me. I'm not like the fittest guy in the world. But, but yes, absolutely. So we've done extensive market research and we know yeah. that, you know, people have these uh, in-home devices where they're tracking, you know, virtual reality is going to be a component where they can actually cycle within the race. So I, right. I think I'll go back to, we're bringing the person sitting at home that is the, aspir that the aspiring cyclist closer to the race. So giving them an option eventually in the near future to actually participate in virtual means to be part of that race, which I think right. is going to be incredibly exciting, right? Um, and there's also going to be some, you know, obviously e-commerce options there where Im immediately with the digital collectibles, you're going to have access to content because it's going to be a gated community. What I mean by that is you, if you are a token holder, this, you know, an NFT holder, that automatically gives you granted access to this content that will be deployed. So there's not about setting up an account and, you know, doing additional steps in that. It's automatically going to recognize that in your vault or your user profile, which is going to be very nice and streamlined. So people are going to go, okay, great. I've immediately got access to that. Now, it's going to be also important to highlight that this will be a subscription model for most people coming after the fact. So this is a long-term project that is going to go for years and years, but there is going to be a subscription fee applied to it. Now, with year 2023, which um, obviously is the first year, it's going to be offered, most of the content is going to be free. So okay. if you are a token holder, you're going to be able to access most of the content and the equivalent will be probably 99 euros or 100 euros or something around that in terms of what that subscription fee might look like. But if you subscribe to Road Code now, you get free access for the year, whatever is going to be developed on that platform. Um, and I go back to the types of content, which is really exciting. We're going to be doing really cool podcast scenarios. We've got expert panels. We're going to have behind the scenes. We're going to have training advice related to the ranking system, which is going to be a lot of fun, right? A new ranking system where people can see individual biometrics, um, which is going to be a very interesting because it's real time. So right. imagine watching a sport. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to encourage betting, but that happens in sport, right? Imagine being able to access all this biometric data and knowing then how that might influence an outcome, right? So that's going to be a very interesting one to watch. Um, you know, let's see how that pans out. But then the fantasy league itself, right? That is going to be a very important part, which is connected to the biometric data and the real-time ranking system, which is going to be a fun, you know, game component. So for the first year, you're going to have a lot of fun content, which will probably be streamed in multiple different languages. So this is not going to be English only. We're looking at, you know, we're looking at LATAM, you know, um, you know, Portuguese and Spanish and, and very big, you know, populations where cycling is very popular. We're looking at Italian, we're looking at Spanish, we're looking at French, uh, we're looking at Belgium, uh, you know, and, and there's going to be many different languages that are going to roll out. So this isn't going to be an English only platform, which is also important because of the nuance, right? So we think also Web3 is not about uh, one size fits all. It will become these niche examples where the multiple languages are going to be available and you can form your own communities and subsects and all that stuff, which is going to be fun, you know, in terms of like how you identify with the platform, because at the end of the day, it's not about us telling that community what they should be identifying with. It's for them to identify themselves and find those niches and, you know, integrate, uh, integrate themselves. Um, so that's what it's going to look like for 2023. Thereafter, whatever happens after that is going to be, you know, that's that's going to be an interesting one. But we do it's have, right? Yeah, it is. But but I don't want to like. I mean, I've seen some interviews where it's like, oh, you know, we just we don't have a game plan. We've got a very good game plan, but it's so ambitious sometimes that we kind of think, you know, sit there and going, you know, how are we going to do this? And um, my old saying is, how do you eat an elephant? And that's one spoon at a time. <laughs> Maybe not the best, example, but, but but it is, it's grandiose. And I mean, you know, we're also talking about documentaries that can be streamed with, you know, uh, broadcast partners. Um, yeah. You know, I might have mentioned that name earlier on, uh, but there are those type of options where, you know, it's really going to be an exciting platform that if you love the sport and if you're not, you know, maybe if you don't, you, you're only starting to explore cycling, it's going to be that very easy access point for you to get your head around things, not only participate in, you know, the content and 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 improve your own cycling results or, or data sets, but also participate in owning something that's going to be very exciting. 
Um, and then also the gaming component is going to be cool. Um, but then e-commerce. So say you are improving your results and, um, you know, there's this horrible term. I don't know if you agree with me, but there's this horrible term called fidgetal, right? And and that's like the combination of uh, physical. I know the face was a cringe, cringeworthy face, but there's this physical item and there's the digital item, right? And these are both going to be in uh, important parts to it. So we believe that whatever we're developing in terms of the in-game assets or the digital collectibles, there could be a real item, you know, accessible through that. So say you bought this digital copy of, of it and it is tradable on this, you know, this game mechanic and you wanted the physical item to be delivered to your doorstep, there could be an option for that. So, you know, cycling apparel is huge and gears and uh, bike accessories are also going to be part of the platform, but it has yeah. to be seamless. It's not going to be like something where people can go, you know, I want the digital option or I want the physical option. It's going to be something that is seamless, that it's like basically, I think an NFT, one of the strongest components of an NFT could be a receipt function. So I bought the physical item. The NFT is immediately associated to that item. And then I have that um, option to trade or, um, you know, um, um, you know, exchange on, on the platform itself. Right. And so, Philip, you you mentioned you're working with the HBAR Foundation. You you know the solution obviously is built on top of the Hedera network. Why did you choose Hedera? And yeah. um, can you share a little bit more about the platform components that you're using? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, you know, we did extensive market research, and one of the biggest challenges or requirements for cycling is a very carbon friendly environment that we do yeah, with their ethos right exactly right so um and there's been previously you know previous examples of nft or web3 projects in cycling that has failed because they did not address this or they didn't take that seriously right. so first and foremost we needed to find a network partner that had the best um you know carbon neutral uh, approach and had the most efficient sort of you know scalability around that so after extensive research, of course, Hedera was an outright, uh, you know, winner in terms of all of that. So that is an important part which we will be addressing. Hedera was obviously a no-brainer when it came to the consensus mechanism, its scalability, its EVM, uh, you know, compliance or compatibility, which means that when we are looking about cross-chain or multiple or interoperable options, that's going to also be key, key down the road some yeah, at some point because. Again, what what are your uh, you know definition of the metaverse could be a different definition, but it should be this whole interoperable environment. We can't crowbar paths or user journeys down a certain path because we believe it's right. It has to be this right. you know this mix match. But but Hedera is um, you know one of the easiest options for us to do because it's scalable, it's incredibly efficient, and it's also very cost effective. We didn't want to go with a solution that obviously had you know high gas fees or high network fees or something like that because one, we're talking to an audience that, that they don't even know what a gas fee is, right? And right. then, you go, okay, well, okay. Yeah, you have to do this. And then, by the way, there's a secondary or a third uh, component to cost implications. We, we're going to lose all of our audience. So we had to choose a network that was the most cost efficient also. And I mean, if you do your due diligence here, there is like way out in the front. And also, if you look at the the conglomerate that is behind or the, the group of conglomerates that are behind it, there are, you know, you've got the likes of, of, of um, you know, Google and, and those type of blue chips it is an incredibly strong, you know, professional ecosystem. Um, so Hedera for us was an absolute logical choice. And we're excited about working with uh, the Hedera teams and whatever this might look like uh, in the future. Fantastic. Well, Philip, thank you for joining us today. You know, this is such an exciting project, both for, I would say, hardcore cycling enthusiasts, as well as those who are just looking to get into the sport and, um, you know, learn more about it, potentially, um, you know, virtually compete um, yeah. challenge themselves and explore so um, we hope you will keep us posted on your progress and um, we look forward to hearing more yeah thank you so much for having me on and it's been fun um, yeah and it's going to be an extremely exciting to 2023 and beyond and yeah I'm excited about working with you guys and uh, you know let's let's uh, let's go as they say in web3 <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Philip. Take care. Cheers. Bye.